Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're diving into one of the most intriguing challenges in mathematics, solving the Basel problem and uncovering the values of even powers of the zeta function. But here's the twist. No complex Taylor series expansions, no unnecessary complications. We'll solve this using the infinite product representation of the sine function. It's simple, elegant, and powerful. So let's get started. First, let's frame the problem. Imagine a series where you sum 1 over 1 to the power of 2 times k, plus 1 over 2 to the power of 2 times k, so on. Here, k is a natural number. For the Basel problem, k equals 1, which means we are tackling the infinite sum of inverse squares. Sounds daunting. Don't worry, it's not. Now, before jumping into the solution, let's revisit a key concept. Any polynomial can be expressed as a product of its roots. This isn't just true for finite polynomials, it's true for infinite series too. The sine function is no exception. Thanks to the fundamental theorem of algebra, sine, with its infinite number of roots, can be written as an infinite polynomial. But what are roots? Simply put, roots are the values of x that make a function equal to zero. For example, sine of x is zero at integer multiples of pi on the x-axis. However, remember that sine is a two-dimensional function. In a three-dimensional system, it doesn't vanish on the z-axis. That's an important distinction. Using a two-dimensional Cartesian system, where sin equals zero at multiples of pi, we can express sine as an infinite product. In simple terms, sine of x equals a constant c times x multiplied by x minus pi multiplied by x plus pi, and so on. This infinite expansion is the backbone of our solution. Next, we use a classic formula in algebra, the difference of two squares. This simplifies the product representation of sine into a more workable form. Now comes an essential step, finding the value of the constant c. Here's something fascinating. c isn't just a random constant. It's the coefficient of the last term of a polynomial. But wait, you might ask, how can an infinite series like sine have a last term? The answer lies in convergence. Although the sine series is infinite, it converges, allowing us to determine this coefficient. To calculate c, we first move x to the left side of the equation. Using the limit as x approaches zero, we encounter a zero over zero indeterminate form. This is where calculus saves the day. Enter L'Hopital's rule, which allows us to compute limits by taking derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of x is one. Substituting the limit as x approaches zero, we find that cosine of zero is one. This gives us the value of c. Once we have c, we plug it back into the original sine product representation and simplify further. Now let's level up. By taking the natural logarithm on both sides, we convert the product into a sum, a handy move in mathematics. Then we differentiate both sides. The derivative of the logarithm of sine is cotangent, giving us an infinite series to analyze. But why stop here? To align this series with a geometric series, we multiply both sides by x over 2. Remember the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series? It's the ratio divided by 1 minus the ratio, provided the common ratio is less than 1 in absolute value. Using this formula, we calculate the sum, leading to a simplified equation which we'll call equation one. Now let's bring in another infinite series expansion for cotangent, which equals one over x minus x over three and so on. Multiplying this series by x over two, as before, gives us another equation. Let's call this equation two. Here's the magic moment. By comparing the coefficients of these two equations, we uncover the values of all even zeta functions. For example, the sum of the infinite series of squares equals pi squared over six, which is the zeta of two. Similarly, the zeta of four equals pi to the power of four divided by 90, and so on. It's like unlocking a treasure chest of mathematical truths. And there you have it. Using nothing more than the infinite product of sine and some clever calculus, we've solved the Basel problem and found the values of even zeta functions. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this mathematical journey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.